right, all right. Let's talk about contrast and tone adjustments in our uh, image. This is part seven of the How I Retouch Photos brought to you by tutvid.com. And today we're talking about, like I said, some tonal adjustments in Photoshop, some things I like to do to my images. Um, I'm just going to do like a mixed bag of things here to this image, um, but you'll see kind of some of the techniques that I use virtually every single image is different because the lighting is always going to be different. The contrast is always going to be a little bit different. The way that you've dodged or burned your image will probably also be different. Um, so there's just a lot of factors that go into this. I want to show you what I do. First and foremost, I need to add some contrast to this image and I want to do that with a curves adjustment layer. Uh, so we're going to go curves adjustment layer and I'm going to pull an S curve. You can actually use the little finger here to say like, all right, I want to darken those areas of the image and then like here where her you know, skin tone gets brighter I want to brighten those parts of the image and sure enough we have like a nice S curve here in our curves dialog so you can see there's before there's after we've just given it this nice kick of contrast uh, one of the other techniques that I like to use is a hide pass sort of mid-tone punch I know that the technique's not going to work very well in this image, but let me just show you how I do it anyway. You hold down Command, Shift, Option, and the letter E, that's Control, Shift, Alt, E, to merge everything to a new layer. You would then desaturate this layer. Command, Shift, or Control, Shift, U. And then go Filter, Other, High Pass. And I'm probably going to set this to about 15 pixels. It's typically what I go with if I use this uh, particular method. And then set this layer to a blend mode of soft light. You can see uh, we're really like deepening the shadows, but it's also giving us like a very bad sharpened effect. So the key here is to reduce opacity to something like 25-30%. And you just almost get like, it almost simulates using the clarity slider in Lightroom or the clarity slider in the camera raw editor. I don't like that technique for this image. I just wanted to show it to you. Uh, I'm going to stick with my curves for contrast. So throw a levels adjustment here. With the levels adjustment, I'm actually going to brighten the image and in doing so, reduce some contrast. Um, but I'm going to bring it back in just a second. Uh, so we, we want to brighten the image here and we want to brighten the shadows just, I mean, just a little bit. Output level, see I'm going like 3, 4, something like that. Just a, just a touch. And we can bring the blacks back uh, just a hair. And what I want to do after I create this sort of contrast killing levels adjustment layer is go with a channel mixer, take on monochrome, boost the reds. Uh, red, there's a lot of red typically in the skin tones. I want to keep her skin tones very light and almost porcelain looking. Uh, so I want to boost that, but I don't want to blow them out. You see that's blown out, that's bad. We want there to be detail. We want to see detail in the skin tones. There we go, something like that. We can boost the blues as well because we have we know we have blue in the dress and blue in the sky and the buildings back there. Great. Set this layer to the blend mode of multiply. All right, you can see it gives us this very sort of washed out uh, look. In fact, if you like this look and maybe it's just a little bit too heavy, the key probably is placing a, a brightness contrast or a curves adjustment layer underneath it. Let's go with a curves adjustment layer and just boost the black point a bit to really lift the contrast and take away the heaviness of some of those shadows. That's kind of a cool effect. Um, in fact, if we just reduce the opacity here of this, uh, this channel mixer layer to maybe like 20%, something like that, so it's not quite so oppressive, we would then want to reduce the opacity of our curves adjustment layer beneath it also to something like 20% or maybe shut it off entirely. See, we don't even really need it anymore. I'll just delete it. Um, if you want to keep that channel mixer up high and really get that, you know, crazy, almost HBO, uh, moody, dramatic look, um, do that. But I don't want that for this image. So I'm going to do this, and you can see there's before, there's after. We're just, we are killing off a little bit of color by using this, darkening things up a little bit. Maybe I'll even boost it to 30 or so. All right, that's pretty cool. And what I need to do now is selectively apply contrast. She still needs to have more contrast applied to her. So I'm going to throw another curves adjustment layer on here. I'm going to create a quick S curve. All right, something like so. I don't want to make her too bright, but I will I will pump the darks a little bit more, something like so. Cool. All right, select the layer mask. Command or Control I to invert the layer mask. We can zoom in on the image a little bit here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is grab my brush tool. I'm going to set the opacity. About 40% is actually good. You want a very soft brush, so hardness should be at zero. Uh, 500 pixels probably works well for this particular image. And I'm going to paint over her face area here. All right, so face, boost the contrast there. Maybe down here along her arm, make the brush smaller, so we're sticking here within her arm. You can boost the contrast in the shadows. That's going to give the shadows a little bit more kick. All right, great. Right here underneath the chin, out here in the hair. And maybe when we look at this, we'll realize these buildings back here could use a little bit more contrast as well. Maybe that. That's cool. All right, so 
there's before, there's after. So you can see it's just, it's an additional, we're throwing additional contrast into her. This was all part of the reason why way back in step one, we just killed off contrast in camera raw, in the camera raw editor, because we knew we could come in here and with adjustment layers, after we had done our retouching, we can selectively add contrast where we want it. Uh, and you can duplicate this layer if you want it to be even more contrasty. Uh, you can do anything you want. You can just throw as much contrast in whatever areas as you want, depending on your taste. So that's probably pretty much it for the tones. Well, actually, let me show you one more thing. One more kind of cool thing you can do, um, you, if you reduce contrast a, a bunch, I'm just going to do this quickly with a brightness contrast layer, kill off a bunch of contrast, and then you merge all of your layers to a new layer, Command, Shift, Option, E, that would be Control, Shift, Alt, E on the PC, as we've said before, and you convert this layer to black and white, so Command, Shift, U, or Control, Shift, U. You can set this layer to something like Soft Light, and get another sort of... Um, lower contrast, but also lower saturation type effect. So you can see there was before, there was after, and you, of course, because it's all broken up onto these layers, you can always reduce uh, opacity where you want. One of the other things that we can do here, one of the things that I like to do, is before you convert it to black and white, you could also just set this layer to the blend mode of multiply to darken everything overall. Maybe we don't want to, well, yeah, probably want to reduce contrast, but what we need to do is brighten up the multiply layer, so we would throw a levels adjustment above that, but because we only want to brighten up this multiply layer, we would clip the levels mask by holding down our alt or option key, hover between the layers, you get that little clip icon, and then we can just brighten up just the levels adjustment layer, so we can really dial in our effect exactly as we want it, and if we're looking at it and we decide, you know what, there's too much color, you can always desaturate that multiply uh, layer, either with something like a black-white adjustment layer, of course you want to clip it, to your multiply layer, and you can see, I mean, it makes all the difference in the world. So, you can do whatever you want with any number of these techniques. I actually kind of like this. It's it's just interesting. It's a little bit different. Um, I, I kind of like what we have here. Maybe I'll shut this. No, that, that still needs to be on there. We're going to leave this as it is. This is just, you know, completely off the cuff. Um, just using some of the different techniques that, I, that I'll use when I'm playing around with tones in Photoshop and trying to play with the contrast and push and pull things. Um, and at this point, we're ready to color grade and influence this image with a little bit of color. But that's going to be the next tutorial. So for contrast and tone adjustment in Photoshop and really the importance of adjustment layers and things like that that you can just break this effect down into multiple adjustment layers so you can tweak and adjust every single little part of it. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Today's moment of brilliance is brought to us by Lisa Reichelt, and her quote is, don't design for everybody. It's impossible. All that ends up happening is you design something that makes everybody unhappy. That's so true, isn't it? Wouldn't you rather have a hundred people hate your work and ten people that love your work rather than have 110 people who think it's just okay. Design for those 10 people that will love your work. So much better. Go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And check out this link here. You can sign up for my newsletter. When you sign up for my newsletter, I send you a free Photoshop course, 30 ways to work with Photoshop faster. It's an amazing little video. You're absolutely gonna love it. You can also follow me on Snapchat or Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. You can see my handles right there on the edge of the screen. Till next time, I'll catch you guys later.